Chapter 11 Then answered Zophar the Namathite, and said, Should not the multitude of words be answered? And should a man full of talk be justified? Should thy lies make men hold their peace? And when thou mockest, shall no man make thee ashamed? For thou hast said, My doctrine is pure, and I am clean in thine eyes. But oh, that God would speak, and open his lips against thee, and that he would shew thee the secrets of wisdom, and that they are double that which, to that which is. Know therefore that God exacteth of thee less than thine iniquity deserveth. Canst thou by searching find out God? Canst thou find out the Almighty unto perfection? It is as high as heaven, what canst thou do? Deeper than hell, what canst thou know? The measure thereof is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. If he cut off and shut up, or gather together, then who can hinder him? For he knoweth vain men, he seeth wickedness also. Will he not then consider it? For vain men would be wise, though man be born like a wild ass's colt. If thou prepare thine heart, and stretch out thine hands toward him, if iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away, and let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacles. For then shalt thou lift up thy face without spot. Yea, thou shalt be steadfast, and shalt not fear, because thou shalt forget thy misery, and remember it as waters that pass away. And thine age shall be clearer than the noonday. Thou shalt shine forth, thou shalt be as the morning. And thou shalt be secure, because there is hope. Yea, thou shalt dig about thee, and thou shalt take thy rest in safety. And thou shalt lie down, and none shall make thee afraid. Yea, many shall make suit unto thee. But the eyes of the wicked shall fail, and they shall not escape, and their hope shall be as the giving up the, of the ghost. We have here Zophar, the third of Job's <laughs> friends, uh, talking to him. And he's listened to Job answer the other two. And he has probably gotten a little bit impatient with Job protesting his innocence. Now, uh, the Namathite, the word Namathite, probably means from a place called Naaman. And we believe that, on the basis of other scriptures, that this was a town located in Edom or Ammon, which were two countries on the east side of the Jordan River, uh, east of the uh, Dead Sea. And they were a primarily grazing country, good country, uh, if found in present-day Jordan. And uh, Zophar says, it's, he's sort of tired of listening, it sounds, to Job's protestations of Job's innocence. Should not the multitude of words be answered? And should a man full of talk be justified? In other words, it doesn't, he doesn't like the fact that Job is defending himself and saying, I didn't do anything to bring this on me. And then he says in verse 3, Should thy lies make men hold their peace? He's really giving it to Job here and basically accusing Job of lying. And when thou mockest, basically meaning not doesn't tell the truth, mocking God. Obviously, these bad things are happening to you and you're protesting you don't deserve them. That means you're mocking God. Shall no man make thee ashamed? In other words, shall those of us who are your friends not point out that you wouldn't be suffering these things from God if it wasn't righteousness? For thou hast said, My doctrine is pure and I am clean in thine eyes. In other words, you've protested to God that you haven't done anything to deserve this. And then he says in verse 5, But oh, that God would speak and open his lips against thee, and that he would shew thee the secrets of wisdom, that they are double that to that which is. Know therefore that God exacteth of thee less than thine iniquity deserveth. In other words, you're getting off easy. Job doesn't think he's getting off easy. He's had all of his children killed and all of his wealth taken away, and he's sick. He doesn't think he's getting off easy, and he can't understand it. Now, there's some other allusions here. 
know, uh, for vain men would be wise, though man be born like a wild ass's colt. Uh, the wild ass uh, was born to freedom, to do whatever he chose to do. And so, even though you are born to do whatever you wish to do, you can't do whatever you wish to do without having consequences. And then he's telling them, if you will, you know, uh, if iniquity be in thine hand, verse 14, if iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away, and let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacles, meaning in your heart, in your home, in what you do. Verse 15, for then shalt thou lift up thy face without spot. In other words, you're not going to be guilty. And shalt thou, it says basically, thou shalt not fear, because thou shalt forget thy misery, and remember it as waters that pass away. So he's telling him, if he would simply own up to the fact that he has done something to deserve this and put it behind him, then he will be able to look to God without any kind of guilt and God will answer his prayers, remember him. In verse 18, and thou shalt be secure because there's hope. And verse 19, and thou shalt lie down, and none shall make thee afraid. And then verse 20, but the eyes of the wicked shall fail, and they shall not escape, and their hope shall be as the giving up of the ghost. In other words, you're a dead man unless you actually do what we tell you. Okay, there's no point protesting. It's obvious that God is punishing you for being wicked. Pay attention to us and do what we tell you. It's for your own good. 